Good morning everyone and welcome to my very sunny winter's garden. This week's update will include hanging out with the trucks, taking a look at a surprise in the greenhouse, plus yesterday I discovered a garden pest which I've only ever seen here during springtime so I was quite surprised. We'll take a look at that plus a bit more so please just sit back and relax for a few minutes and let's get into it now. It's 7 a.m. on Friday morning. The sun is just about to rise over the range in the distance. And I'm out here with my morning coffee. I'm gonna head down to the chicken coop now, let them out and then have a bit of a wander around the garden. Here she comes. It's gonna be another beautiful winter's day here in New South Wales. Absolute clear blue skies. Look what I just spotted as I was heading down to let the girls out. This gorgeous pink rose. This certainly isn't the time of year where you'd see these blooms. Usually with roses they put on their floral display in spring and summer time. However, I do often find the odd flower here or there during winter. I need to tie this plant up to its archway. It's just covering up the path at the moment. I'll attach it here to this section along with this beautiful climbing jasmine plant which is absolutely covered in buds. These should open up in a couple of months time in spring. So you can imagine those lovely delicate little flowers in combination with these beautiful big roses. Good morning girls. You gonna come out to play? Hi Snowflake, what are you up to? Let's see if there's any eggs. None in here yet. It's still a bit early. I might get a couple today, hopefully. During winter time, I tend to not get as many eggs as I would during summer. So usually I get four a day in summer, but this time of year, I'll be lucky to maybe even get two. Right beside the chicken coop down here is where I have been tossing the bedding when I have been cleaning it out. But I do need to rake all of this up now and put it into my special dedicated compost bin for chicken manure. I pop it all in here really just for convenience. It makes my life a bit easier. I can put all the manure here in one place and then come springtime or when I start to really work on the garden beds, I'll be able to use all of this to add some lovely, rich nutrients to the soil. I'm now back over at the coop because I did want to mention that during winter time, I tend to put a lot more straw in their box. I'll probably even put a bit more in here um, just to help with insulation. <laughs> hey, Autumn, don't worry. I'm just showing everyone where you sleep. That's all and have your lay your eggs. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so just put some more extra straw in here. Just keeps it nice and cozy for them. Um, I mean, I don't get too stressed about it because where I live in New South Wales, it really actually doesn't get too cold. And um, we never get snow and we only get the occasional light frost. There was only one time I ever remember getting a super heavy frost. So it doesn't get too chilly at night and they're all able to snuggle together anyway in here and get a good night's sleep. Because my garden is such a jungle, there's often a lot hidden in it that I don't even realize is there. It's only when winter arrives and all the deciduous trees and herbaceous perennials lose their foliage that I notice them. Some are really exciting, like for example, when I find old bird's nests, knowing that they chose to raise their babies here in my garden. And then others are stuff like this. I just grabbed a glove because I don't want to touch it with my bare hands. It's poisonous to animals and humans. A noxious weed here in New South Wales called moth vine. You can see here that it looks very similar to a choco or even if you squint a bit, maybe a little bit like an avocado. I often don't notice them until winter. So this one is over here near one of my rose trees. And you can see on the one plant, it has mul multiple seed pods. And inside each of these are hundreds of dandelion type seeds that disperse in the air the same way as a dandelion would. What I'm gonna do is I'll pop on my other glove because I have to be really careful of the sap that's in here. It can really irritate the skin. Pop on my glove, 
cut all of these off, place them in a plastic bag and they go straight in the bin. Now some people um, feel comfortable enough put, putting them in their compost bin because they feel like the compost bin will get hot enough to kill off any seeds inside. Um, I'm not that much of a confident gardener as of yet so I'd rather just um, err on the side of caution and pop these straight in the rubbish bin. I have been so excited to show you inside the greenhouse this week. I know you'll share my joy. Do you remember last Friday, I wasn't super optimistic about seeds germinating for another few weeks, if at all, but guess what? Look at this, do you see all the little speckles of green everywhere? We have some baby feverfew, orange cauliflower, I can see at least three there. Pink frills, poppies, copper red everlasting daisies, Flemish antique poppies. You can see just starting to break through the soil. There's a few there. I'm sure there'll be a lot more by next week. There's a dame's violet. And at the back here are some lacy facilia. Really teeny tiny. Their stems are quite dark, so they do camouflage into the soil, but you can see there's some leaves. This makes me so excited to think that I could have some seedlings, you never know, in a few weeks that are ready to pot on and by spring we'll be ready to go out into the ground. And quickly taking a look at these nigellas. Remember I said last week some of them would die off and they have some of them have just shriveled up and that is to be expected with little seedlings that you transplant. That's why I always do more than I think I'll need so that you're not disappointed and left with less plants than you really want to have out in your garden. I have a little issue here that surprised me yesterday and I just want to have a little chat about it and get your opinion. So this here is a fennel plant which was put in last spring. I didn't actually end up harvesting the bulb, which is down here at the base. You see it down there. It's probably at this stage, maybe a bit too woody to eat. And plus the fact, I actually don't mind it being here. I think it's got beautiful ferny type foliage on it, which looks pretty. And I can always use these in flower arrangements too. They remind me a little bit of, you know, the foliage from Cosmos in summertime. Well, when I was looking at this plant, one lovely thing I noticed was there's a beautiful big flower. And then over here, something very interesting. So here's an old flower head. But if we take a closer look, you can see over here, put my hand out. You see the stems are covered in aphids. I have never seen aphids in the garden Oh, look at them. <laughs> I've never seen aphids in the garden during winter time. Is this unusual? Is it maybe because it's mild? I don't know. Has anyone got any ideas? I did try and Google it, but I couldn't get a decent answer. Now, what I'll probably do with this stem here is chuck it in the compost pile um, because I don't really want them spreading around the garden. Aphids are pretty easy to remove from your garden if you get on top of them early. Um, otherwise they kind of explode in population. So what I do when I do see aphids is I just run my fingers along the stem where they are and give them a little squish and that kills them off. You can also use your hose just to blast them off the foliage. But if you want to make life a little bit easier for yourself and stop aphids getting out of control in your garden. What I like to do is try and create an environment, an ecosystem that attracts predators to this little, these little pests. So you could attract um, ladybugs, lace wings, um, other insects who absolutely love eating these little green bugs. The girls have come over beside me. <laughs> They're eating some of those cherry tomatoes that are growing wild in this garden <laughs> well i'm gonna head off for now everyone thank you so much for watching again this week and i will see you again next friday